Hey, I'm in the wood yard. I've got a wheelbarrow. I've got some hickory. We're at my old wood yard. We're going to have somebody come to pick up some wood. Here we go. There's the wheelbarrow. There's the hickory. I had someone who buys wood for me quite often for smoking. They have a smoker that they take to events and he needs some wood. He wanted oak, but I'm out of dry oak. So I told him I had some hickory and he said that'll work. So the hickory, I had a little bit left here. This is from a year ago that I did this, year and a half ago I did this wood. And uh, the wheelbarrow is right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to load up the wheelbarrow and we're going to take it out to my parking lot out front. And I'm going to probably do two wheelbarrows full. Probably will fill this trunk. Don't know how to charge them yet because it's going to end up being about a third of a face cord, I'm thinking, by the time we get all the wood up there. So the hickory I'm selling now for $140 a face cord so I'll probably charge them like 40 bucks for a couple wheelbarrows full something like that and uh so yeah I'm gonna do that and then I've got another delivery for sure later today and maybe one other one so that's a delivery day so we're gonna move some wood right now so it is an absolutely gorgeous spectacular beautiful day in the old wood yard and in the new wood yard it's only four miles away but yeah, this guy's gonna come get some hickory. So I'm gonna load it up and take it up front there. And the reason I'm doing this is because we took all of my gravel away when we moved the wood yard. And uh, about 50 yards away is where the gravel stops. And then it's just basically mud because we've been getting a lot of rain. And I don't want him driving back here and getting stuck or rutting it all up. So I'm just gonna load up a couple wheelbarrows full and take it up there for him. And uh, then later, like I said, I'm gonna do a couple other deliveries too. Yeah, this hickory is nice and dry. It's been here for a little over a year now, stacked. So should be some good stuff. And uh, I got a feeling that once he tries this, he's gonna like it. Because a lot of people that I sell hickory to for smoking, that's all they want. Once they get it, they really like it. And uh, this should be some really good stuff. Nice size stuff too for his little smoker that he's got. And uh, then we're gonna do a couple other deliveries. People have been calling me lately because they want campfire wood. And something came up this morning that I thought I would share with you guys. It's kind of interesting. I had a guy that has bought wood from me in the past. And uh, he had paid the last time he bought wood from me. He paid, I want to say it was like 110 for a face cord of mixed hardwood. Well, now my price is 120 And uh, he tried to... Uh, he tried to be uh, Monte Hall with me. He tried to make a deal. He said, how about I get two face cords for $200 and uh, with the delivery? He said, because there's a place he can get it from that'll do it for $95. I said, well, I said, I'd like to have you as a customer. However, I sell every stick of wood I produce pretty much every year. There's no reason for me to discount it. And uh, if you want it, it's 110, 120 per face cord with free delivery. And I said, if that works, that's fine. If it doesn't, that's okay with me. And so he texted me back. He said, thanks for being honest and let me know. He said, I totally understand. Uh, he said, why would you sell it for less when you can get the full amount? He said, but I can get this for less and I can save myself 40 bucks or whatever it's gonna be. I said, fine, just let me know if you need some in the future. So don't be afraid to say no to people, especially if they want to deal with you. He even said, sorry for, sorry for the haggling. Um, the price is the price. I'm not going to discount it for anybody. I don't need to sell it that bad. Um, if I was trying to gain market share and uh, get all the customers, maybe I would do that. But I don't want all the customers. I only want the ones that I can handle, which is... A lot. So, okay, first wheelbarrow load's full. I'm gonna take it up. Whoa, it's a heavy one. Well, first off, I gotta apologize. I've had some major mic problems in the last few videos, and this is one of them. I'm getting recording only on one channel, and sometimes nothing, sometimes it's barely there, so. I'm going to do a little voiceover and tell you what I was talking about here because I was flapping my gums while I was loading this wood and I was talking about how sometimes you get people that want a deal and you basically have to make a decision. How bad do you want the customer? Do you want to make a deal and lose some money or do you want to, you know, just tell them, sorry, <laughs> it's not going to happen. That's what I did this this case. The guy wanted to get a deal. He wanted basically me to knock off $40. I had sold to him in the past, and so I just said, you know, 
I sell most of the wood that I cut every year. I really don't need to make deals. If you're interested, just let me know, but this is the price. So the price is the price. Um, if you're trying to gain market share, yeah, then maybe it would be a good idea, but in this case, um, I could just tell that it wouldn't have ended well because he would have wanted a deal every time. And he may have told some people and then they're going to try to get a deal. And generally I have found, because I've been in business for 34 years myself with my wife and my photography business, that if you start wheeling and dealing with people, they always expect a deal. And then they'll push for more and more and more. So you just got to decide, you know, do you want to be that guy? Yeah, if they're buying huge quantities, maybe, or if they buy very often, you can do something. But I have found what works better is to give them some spiff item, something that would be desirable that isn't part of the price and still charge the full price, which would be like if he bought, say a guy would buy a full cord, and he would say, well, what deal can you give me? I say, well, I'll do free delivery. And if that's not enough, and say, what else could you do? You could say, well, I'll bring you a couple bundles of free kindling. And they're worth, you know, five bucks a piece or whatever you're going to charge for them. So maybe that's something you could do. But I just know that in this case, it would have not have ended well because he was pushing for more than I wanted to give. He wanted $50 off. You know, and firewood is not that profitable that you can do that kind of stuff where you can offer people big, huge discounts. And like I said, if it would have been a bigger order, maybe. Um, and then again, maybe not because maybe they would just push for more. Um, I had one guy a couple years ago that bought, I think it was three full cords, so it would have been nine face cords, and I had to make two trips because I could only haul about four and a half or five face cords per load, so I had to make two trips, and he was actually about 20 miles away. So the delivery fee for one trip was going to be like 25 or $30, and he says, well, being that I'm buying two of them, what can you do for me? I said, I'll tell you what, I said, I only charge you one delivery fee. So I knocked off like 30 bucks and he said, oh, that sounds good. So he was happy. So you got to kind of think about what you're going to do and how it's going to affect you in the long run too. So, so yeah, here I'm just dumping all this wood up front here because the guy's coming with his car and there he is, we're loading it up and uh, kind of fill this trunk right up. We did two wheelbarrows full and it filled the trunk. We, we had a hard time closing it. So anyway, there it is. And then when I get back to the wood yard, hey, there we are, we're back. I was just showing you how I had a pile that fell over. Because I had them stacked fairly cl close, they just fell against each other, so it wasn't that big a deal. Now, I had a brace piece, which is right there in the middle of the screen, that ran through the wood. But as I took the wood away, it lost its strength because there was no weight on it, and then the whole thing kind of just slid over. But luckily, it just kind of slid up against the other one. So it's still off the ground. Um, this one here is leaning the same way. It's got a little bit of a lean to it. And a couple of pieces did fall down in there, but the majority of it is off the ground. That's the problem when you go really high and you stack your wood in the winter. It can definitely lose its uh, balance. Man, that guy's fast. Look at him go. Ooh, he's really chucking wood fast. I wonder if you guys can all chuck that fast. I'm sure you can. Okay, enough flapping of the gums. This guy's just going to load this wood up and he's going to drive away. Watch. beautiful load of mctired wood in the truck ready to go down the road that took me seven minutes just taking my time if i go really fast i can do it in about five but it's kind of warm out here all i got on is a t-shirt and a sweatshirt and i'm sweating it's only about 48 degrees but there's almost no wind today just a little bit and it's sunny with this dark thing on it i'm actually getting hot might be um I might have to strip down a little bit here. You don't want to see that though. Okay, we're going on the road to deliver this load right now. Back in the wood yard, and this next delivery is also for a face cord or third of a cord of mixed hardwood. And the guy asked me, he says, can I, you get me any of that, you know, those smaller pieces? I forget what it's called. He said, it's, you know, the small pieces of wood. I said, you mean kindling? He says, yeah, that's it. So 
Um, he asked, how much is it? I said, five bucks a bundle. Now, my bundles are huge. They're well, way over a cubic foot. Probably 1.5 is my guess. So they're about as big as you can make them with the bundler. So five bucks a bundle is what I'm selling them for. And people have been buying them. So that's what that is. I'm going to load this in and we're going to go deliver this load. And this is a new customer and he was very... He had a lot of questions because he had some bad wood ones. So he really wanted to make sure it was good wood for burning outside and fire pit, summertime, and he just wants one face cord to try it out. Gonna give him some good stuff. So we're gonna load her up right now. There it is folks another beautiful load of mixed hardwood is in the truck ready to be delivered and i'm going to answer something that has come up once again on the channel for those of you that have been around for a very long time you've heard this probably a hundred times but for those of you that are new to the channel i get asked about every other day have i ever broke the back window in my truck throwing wood in and the answer to that after 53 years of loading wood into different trucks from my dad and then helping my brothers and myself, zero. Never broke one yet, because I don't just throw it wildly. I actually aim and kind of place it. One of the things that does help though is having this tunnel cover on here. I got this right here, and it's kind of like a little bumper. It kind of protects pieces from jumping up on you there. So that does help, but yeah, I'm just kind of careful when I'm chucking wood on there. I don't just throw them like a wild man. So I've never broke a window yet, so there's your answer. And I don't plan on breaking one either, so. I'll have the camera running at all times, so if I do break one, you're going to get to see it. Okay, down the road we go. We're going to go deliver some wood. Yeah. 